Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we've got the privilege of being at the Fairroot Nation um, Nursery located in Mission Viejo, California, which is a part of South Orange County. Um, and I'm here with Kevin Chang, who is the owner and founder um, of this um, nursery that is just exploding at it seems with hundreds of fruit um, varieties that are both exotic and rare. Um, and we're gonna have the pri privilege of taking a tour of all of these. And the coolest part I wanna share, and this is what I've got my notes, is that I met Kevin on Instagram about a little over a year ago um, where he um, had purchased our products and he put the hashtag Ivy Organics. And this is kind of the theme for this year is for a lot of our you know customers around the world is to put hashtag Ivy Organics so that we can see how you're using Ivy Organics in your garden. And I noticed that in your post, you um, basically shared how you have used it on your mangoes and your figs. Um, and also talk about figs is thank you so very much for all the cuttings yes. for our most recent post where we gave a lot of cuttings to our customers that um, entered um, and were interested in our figs. And we were able to create over 100 fig cuttings. And specifically what we got from Kevin are the Bear Root Nation Kadota fig varieties. Um, which are going to consumers as well, and you've contributed at least 20 to 30 cuttings um, out of his trees that will be going around the country um, this week. So thank you so much for that. No problem. Um, tell us a little bit about Bear Root Nation. All right, so my name is Kevin uh, here at Bear Root Nation, and what we do is we try to emphasize on growing rare and exotic fruit trees for people who necessarily wouldn't be able to go out on their own and find them at your local nursery. So like right now we have over 200 different varieties of fruit and uh, things you can try and I'm excited to get it out to the world for everybody to see. Oh that's awesome and I've noticed on your Instagram, um, and that's why I've got my paper here, is that you wrote, um, care for people, care for earth, and share the surplus and you've just shared your figs with us and I really appreciate that. And. Um, and he really has a lot of abundance here and I'm so glad we have the opportunity to connect you to the world and hopefully get some of your abundance to other consumers around the, around the country. Yeah. Um, so thank you so very much for that. Before we take the tour, when you bought the Ivory Organics product um, last, which I think was about a year ago, um, which product did you use and how did you use it in your garden? Alright, so uh, yeah, I bought one of these um, 3-in-1 Pink Art. I, I chose the green version just because it blended in with my trees a little bit better. But I use this on my figs, I use this on my mangoes, my avocados, and basically it protected them from sunburn all summer. Uh, no bug damage, because it comes with oils and it repels them. And the ones that I didn't use it on are almost half of the size of the ones that I did pick. That's great. I think that's the first time I've heard, um, you know, but I, I know that it offers a lot of protection to the plants, but the fact that they've grown twice as much, being that they're no longer struggling against sunburn in the summer. Not that we have issues with wind, wind, um, winter wind scald um, here in Southern California with the warmer winters that we've got. Um, but that's awesome that the plants are performing that much better for you. That's yeah. great news. Okay. Um, well, let's take the um, the tour of the garden and, and, and learn more about what, what you have to offer here. Right. Let's start off over here with these bananas that are behind us. Where'd you get these from? All right, and right here we got Goldfinger varieties. Those are um, a little more closer to the ones you would find in your local grocery store, uh, but a little bit sweeter. And we also have different varieties like uh, Dwarf Red, which um, get to about three to four feet and produce a red skinned banana. Tastes really good. And we also have one called a Dwarf Iholina, which you can get from Hawaii. And actually the inside of the banana is pink or orangish shade. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And um, as you can see over here, at the base of these, we got about two or three pups per plant and that's optimally where you want them because if you get too much pups then it'll hinder the growth of your bananas. For um, the viewer that's watching this and, and you, and oh wow, and I can just notice like how much leaves you've got here. Do, are these, do these naturally fall from other trees in the garden or have you added these around the, around the bananas? So um, I've done a little bit of both. Just above us as you can see we have an ash tree and once a year we get a very generous large basically mulch delivery from our tree, which you can see by all the leaves here. And it goes down about a foot. 
And that's what you really want to pile up around your bananas to keep them warm and uh, keep all the moisture locked in. That's fantastic. I really got to share with the viewers. I've been coming a little closer. Check out the soil, how great it is. I'm hoping we can keep the light on it. And I just hit, I don't know if you can see the worms are working their way into the soil, but they're loving all of this rich soil. And I noticed as he was digging, it was coming out like black, like how, how healthy the soil is. Let me actually do that again. It, so let's take a look at the soil over here. And you can see how soft and rich the soil is as these leaves are breaking down and basically enriching the soil. And as you said, it's offering also insulation to the plants. Um, the other thing before we leave your bananas for the other parts of your garden, um, once these larger bananas produce the flowers and the fruit and you harvest the fruit, what do you end up doing with these larger parent bananas? Like, like what's the cycle that happens here? So what you want to do is once you get your banana to a mature size and it flowers and you get the fruit, once you cut it, within a couple of days you want to top the mother plant. Because once it fruits and flowers, the plant's basically done. And that's the concept of why it shoots up so many pups around it. I'm, that's great. I'm glad you said that. So, so basically, all those pups are going to replace the parent plant. Is is what is what yes. is what's going to happen from year to year? Is yes. that the pups replace the parent? The parents brought down, um, and I'm sure you probably mulch the parent plants as well once, yes. once you bring that down. Yes, that's great. Um, the other thing too that I get a question from some users, and I'd love to get your feedback. I, I respond to these um, periodically throughout each month. Is when the banana basically fruits, and if you harvest the fruit. Can that same banana parent plant that produced the fruit, can it stay and produce another flower and create some more fruit? It cannot. So once the mother plant has fruited and flowered, it's basically lived its cycle. And now at that point, you're relying on the pups around it to give you a new mother plant. So we didn't prepare this in advance, but I'm glad, um, Kevin, you shared that with our viewers as well when it comes to banana care, that once it produces fruit, the banana plant is pretty much dead you're relying now on the next generation being the pups that surround it. Well, let's take a look at um, other parts of your garden. All right. So Kevin, where are we um, at now? So this is uh, my little mango grove that I like to call. And right here we have a variety called sweet tart. And these varieties are what are known as top tier mangoes. And you can't find them in any of your local stores. And you probably won't be able to because they, um, they don't ship very well, but the quality is outstanding. Oh, that's great. And I've noticed over here you've got um, a grafting project going on as well. What are you grafting onto this variety? So right here um, we have, as the rootstock, it's called a manila mango, and you can pick these up at any local nursery. But on top, on this side, you can see we have what's called a juicy peach. Yeah, and that's great. This uh, obviously has very... Um, high qualities and characteristics of peach flavor in a mango. And this other one is called a siatong, and that's a really um, popular Thai variety, also related to the Nam Dok Mai. So you got the siatong on the left, you got the juicy peach on the right, and they're both growing on the same one rootstock over here. And if I can just turn it around. Uh, so this is a supporting stake, this is the rootstock. There's this one trunk supporting two varieties of Yes. of mangoes, correct? Correct. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's, you're getting a little cocktail tree with different varieties on one rootstock. That's fantastic. And then what's this one? And then this guy over here is called a lemon zest mango. And you can tell him compared to this guy, he has a lot less leaves on the top because he was more stressed. So I'm keeping him in the shade for the meantime so he can acclimate to uh, the Southern California weather. That's great. Before we get to the other mangoes, I'm noticing here you got some cuttings of some, looks like dragon fruit? Yes. So right here, yeah, we have uh, dragon fruit cuttings, which they're really easy to start. It's almost as simple as just putting it in the ground. And most people don't realize, but there are hundreds of different varieties of dragon fruits. And those will range in from different size, color, and flavor. And your predominant colors you'll get are white, purple, pink, or red. I was waiting for you to say red. Red is the only one that I usually typically see at the stores. Yeah, and as you can see right here, this variety is actually called a Nicaraguan red. Oh wow. So these will produce red flesh on the inside. That's wonderful. Well, let's um, continue to the mangoes. All right. Mm. Let's see there's a few more here. Uh, and right here, we have a few more mangoes, and these ones are actually 
on my rare varieties that you probably won't be able to find anywhere else. This one, as you can see, is called a Kasturi mango. And this is uh, actually extinct in the wild. So I'm one of few people to have it in Southern California so we can try to propagate and spread the love of this mango to everybody in California and eventually the U.S. That's great. So when you said rare, um, I, you probably just said it. Um, but where is it? You said it's rare from where? Um, it actually this originates in Borneo, but you, it's extinct in Borneo now because of logging and companies taking land. So these are the very few uh, scions that were released to the public. So it's a Borneo mango. Yes. That's awesome. And then how about this one over here? And then this guy is another rare variety, and it's called a guava mango. And there actually isn't much information available about this mango at all wow so we're actually growing it to literally learn the characteristics of how this mango will grow in period that's one <laughs> and then and this last one over here over here is a manila mango and these ones are more common you can find them in more of your local nurseries but they're really good to use as root stocks so with that you can graft on more superior and better varieties on top of this guy. Yeah, because I've noticed with the other grafting project you had on that side, it was also a manila mango yes. you grafted onto. So your preference rootstock is using the manila. So yes. if you're going to graft more varieties, start off with this yes. variety here. Start off with the manila mango. S something I want hopefully the viewer to see it. I see it's pushing out new growth. And this is really cool how it's got these reddish, purplish leaves that will then eventually turn green as they mature. So um, the color contrast is just really beautiful when it comes to mango. That's great. So we just saw three rare varieties of mangoes and then I see there's a much larger one and another one that's blooming. So we can also share the flowers as well. What's this one over here? So this guy over here uh, is a fruit punch mango. And as crazy as it sounds to believe, but it actually has very strong characteristics of a fruit punch flavor in the mango. Itself. That's great. And you don't find that very often in fruits. And then there's another one, and another one, and another one. So over here, we have another fairly common variety, and this is called a keet mango, K-E-I-T-T. And it's a little more common, like the manila, but way more productive and uh, adaptable. And the keet is typically one you'll find as a store bought variety, yes, right? That's the one that's got the reddish orange yeah. um, outside. So the keep mango. Um, and then how about this one? And then this guy over here is um, another rare variety called coconut cream. Yeah. And this one has consecutively been one of the number one rated mango flavors anyone has ever tried. And it's actually one of the fewer mangoes to actually be patented by somebody. So this particular tree I won't be able to share any cuttings from because it's patented but I can share the fruit <laughs> sounds great looking forward to having some fruit yes. and then there's uh, I think one more on this side so and over here we have a mango called the pina colada mango and this one is also another highly rated mango because it has characteristics of a pina colada drink in it Trying to see if the um, if the flowers are scented, and there's a, a small hint of smell, and there's a lot of pollinators here earlier. Oh yeah, that's great. So here's um, the mango flowers. If you want to zoom in a little closer, so um, the viewer can see what the mango flower looks like as well. And what a beautiful coloration between the yellow and the pink, and then onto the green stem. And then pretty soon, within what I would assume a week to a few weeks, we should see little fruit hanging yes. off of it. And then we should be eating them by uh, summertime. And then it'll be a summer fruit. And then there's one more over here. And then this little guy is called a carry mango. And this one is not as common or extremely rare, but it's uh, not very common. And it produces really, really large, juicy mangoes that are practically fiberless. That's like great. All juice. We got to transition to citrus. I know you got a lot of citrus also here in your garden, but my favorite one that you introduced me to is the finger lime. Um, yes. Let's take a look at that one. 
So here we are now in front of, what is this, if you want to explain it? So this is what you call an Australian finger lime. And it's one of the most uncommon limes or citrus that you will probably ever see. Because one thing is you'll notice there's a bunch of spikes on it. And people like to use these as um, hedge protection. But not only with the benefit of a hedge protection, you also get some pretty tasty fruit. And if you come really close... I'm hoping you get in the light, like... Like right here. Yeah, right there. You can see that it actually looks like caviar. I'll have some. <laughs> so I just tasted this about an hour ago, <laughs> and it really blew my mind. I'm like, I'm not into fish eggs, but to have such a wonderful lime tasting lime fruit and then the crunch that it offers too you suggested like what this would be great on for this, example this um it's not used as a main dish but if you put it as a garnish on things like avocado slices fish chicken any kind of meat it adds a really nice crunchy lime garnish on it i'm absolutely completely blown away like of all the citrus this is like my newest favorite citrus tree is what is it called again? I know finger lime, but you Australian said Australian. Australian finger lime. Wonderful. And then um, the other thing I, I've noticed is that the leaves are like super small um, compared to most citrus leaves. Yes. Um, is that typical of the finger lime or is this just a smaller tree or do you want to explain what's going on? Um, these are actually what you would call a micro citrus. So yes, the leaves on all of these ones are actually a lot smaller than your typical citrus. And if you notice that they come out at every spike, you'll find a little leaflet. Oh wow. So again, just to reiterate what you said, I mean finger lime is great for avocados and uh, fish. Uh, fish, chicken, any kind of meat really. And for me, I mean the, the texture and the taste I get is I got lime that's in a, like this crunchy ball. Yeah. Um, which is just again completely different than any other citrus I've ever had. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing um, this with us. And um, you taught me at the beginning something that you've got 200 more than 200, what was the number? Like around 210. So he's got 210 fruit trees. They're all fruit trees? All fruit trees. Wow, so 210 fruit trees. I couldn't even name 210 fruit trees, I don't <laughs> think. Um, fruit trees that he can share with you. And you yep. said, is it specific to Southern California or will you ship across the country? Uh, well, we'll start off in Southern California, but we eventually the plan is to go across the entire country. So if you're outside of Southern California, still say try them. Yep. Um, I'm gonna put the link um, down below to um, to reaching out to Kevin Chang of the Bear Root Nation Nursery located here in Mission Viejo, California. Um, and I know his preferred ways of being um, contacted are Facebook as well as Instagram. Um, so I'll put those links down below um, here on the screen um, and then I'll also put in the comments down below as well. Um, thank you so very much, Kevin, for thank you very much too. sharing your beautiful Garden of Eden with us and, and sharing with the world as well. Um, your knowledge and your skills and preserving all these rare varieties. And I know there's so much more you've got, but I'll try to also put a link to all of those 210 fruit trees that you've got available in the comments down below where users can get more familiar with all that you have to offer, which is so fantastic and thank you so much. Thank you. Um, if you guys found this video informative and helpful, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of our other educational gardening videos by Ivory Organics. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.